be July 26, 2022 meeting of the Environment Committee to order. And first up on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. We did uh, push our information item to a future meeting because the presenter was unavailable. So um, is everybody okay with the agenda as written? Then we will move forward. Approval of the July 12, 2022 Environment Committee minutes. Vento moves approval. Zero seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? Say aye. 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 The we minutes are debate. <laughs> approved unanimously. <laughs> so our bit, one business item for today is 2022-212 full service and process mechanical plant engineering master contracts. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Make sure the clicker works. Oh, there it is right there. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, good afternoon, Ms. Chair and um, committee members. And thank you for the opportunity to present this business item. My name is Tim Amstutz, and I am an assistant manager in plant engineering, one of the programs in wastewater planning and capital projects delivery. I'll be presenting business item 2022-212 called Master Contracts for Full Service and Process Mechanical Plant Engineering Services. Let's see if this works. Oh, it does. <clears throat> the scope of services for, is for consulting engineering services for wastewater treatment plant projects. The request for proposals identified two types of master contracts, uh, Group A and Group B. Group A master contracts are primarily for more complex wastewater treatment processes. Group B master contracts are for general engineering for wastewater treatment plant projects. The work for both Group A and B was organized into engineering tasks such as planning, design, and construction engineering tasks, which, do, which include RFI responses, um, submittal review, and development of proposed change orders. There are three other construction support services identified. Uh, those are systems overview training and commissioning, specialty evaluations, and construction inspection services. As I mentioned uh, in the previous slide, Group A work is primarily for more complex wastewater treatment processes. Uh, an example of this type of work is the Blue Lake Wastewater Treatment Plant Phase 1 improvements. The facility plan for Blue Lake was approved by the Council on April 2021 and recommends $413 million of capital project improvements. Phase one, phase one improvements address near-term capacity and renewal needs. The, I want to draw your attention to the photographs. The photograph on the left shows the facility where the second dryer will be constructed prior to rehabilitating the first and existing dryer. The middle photograph shows one of the existing digesters. Blue Lake has four digesters. This project will add a fifth for process stability. And the last photograph on the right shows a primary clarifier. The project will rehabilitate sludge collectors and other metal elements in the plant's eight primary clarifiers. Um, other phase one work includes secondary treatment process improvements to optimize performance of the biological phosphorus removal. This is needed prior to the addition of tertiary filters in the second phase to achieve a 0.3 milligrams per liter of effluent total phosphorus. Next slide. <clears throat> the Group B master contracts 
um, is for general wastewater treatment plant work. This type of work includes condition assessments, structural evaluations, building performance or optimizations and recommissioning, civil site work, piping systems and mechanical equipment designs, architectural designs, and electrical and instrumentation designs. Uh, the photograph on the left shows a typical treatment tank, tank, this one happens to be at Metro, that requires structural evaluations and potential modifications, um, most likely caused by H2S. The photograph on the right shows civil site work recently constructed and is an example of typical road replacement work needed at our plants. The request for proposals was issued January 6, 2022. The disadvantaged business enterprise goal is 12% and 14 proposals were received February 15, 2022. There were six proposers who indicated their interest in Group A work. Uh, they were Arcadis US Incorporated, Brown and Caldwell, Hazen and Sawyer, HDR Engineering Incorporated, Jacobs Engineering Incorporated, and Stantec Consulting Group or Services. There were eight proposers who identified their interest in Group B work. Those were Carollo, Donahue and Associates Incorporated, H.R. Green, Kimley Horn and Associates Incorporated, MSA Professional Services Incorporated, Short, Elliott, and Hendrickson Incorporated, Stanley Consultants Incorporated, and TKDA. The proposal, proposals were evaluated by five MCS staff members and two external stakeholders. Each of the proposals was evaluated based on the following criteria. The quality of the proposal, the qualifications of the proposer, the experience of the proposer, and the service delivery plan of the proposer. Brown and Caldwell and Jacobs had the highest scores of the Group A proposers. HR Green, MSA, SEH, and TKDA had the highest scores of the Group B proposers. Before I move on to the next slide, I'd like to, um, and for the proposed action by the Environment Committee, I'd like to provide two comments. <clears throat> First, the proposed contract amounts that'll be shown on the next page are proportion to the scope for which each firm demonstrated expertise. Second, all of the firms will be performing engineering work. Contract amounts were increased for construction support services, and only three firms requested to perform systems overview training and commissioning, specialty evaluation and construction inspection services. The proposed action asked for today is that the Metropolitan Council authorize the regional administrator to award and execute contracts 21P-297A through F for full service and process mechanical plant engineering services with not to exceed amounts as follows. Brown and Caldwell for contract 21P-297A in the amount of $18 million. H.R. Green for contract 21P-297B in the amount of $2,500,000. Jacobs Engineering Incorporated for contract 21P-297C in the amount of $9 million. MSA Professional Services for contract 21P-297D in the amount of $2,500,000. Short Elliott, Hendrickson Incorporated for contract 21P-297E in the amount of $3 million, and TKDA for contract 21P-297F in the amount of $5 million. This concludes my presentation, Ms. Chair and committee members, and I am happy to entertain any questions that you may have. Thank you. Questions from the committee? 
Oh, I'm going to take my glasses off to be able to see well here. Madam Chair, um, uh, the question I have is around uh, OEO um, goals and DBE. Um, th what I'm reading here is that we're at a 12 percent. Um, is there more information that you could give us on how that is divvied out or how that is uh, going to be executed? Uh, I don't have information on that. I'd have to ask OEO for that. All right, let's ask OEO. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> I believe we have somebody who can answer that. Ashanti Payne. Uh, well, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, committee members. Ashanti Payne, Assistant Director, Office of Equity and Equal Opportunity. Um, all proposers uh, either met or exceeded the goal. Um, different... Uh, and incorporated uh, MCUBs for different services. I think there were uh, one or two that are being used by uh, two proposers. And um, the range was from 12% to 26% MCUB participation. Does that answer your question? Yeah, uh, just to follow up, are, are any of the primes um, DBE contractors? No. Okay. I guess is my desire to find more uh, primes that would be. That That's my only comment. Okay. Well, we did get an anonymous email about this contract, and that's rather unusual for, for those, for anonymous comments to come in about contracts. Uh, they're claiming that the firms selected don't have adequate people to in the within the area to fulfill the contract. Did we have somebody here from contracting at all? It would it would appear to me that we can't discriminate on where they might be getting their people from if they make a, a bid that we're not allowed to do that. But maybe you could answer. Madam Chair, committee members, Jody Jacoby, Director of Procurement. And I think the question that you're asking is where is the, are the staff local? And so I'm going to defer to the project manager to answer this. This was a Brooks Act request for proposal where uh, the, the most important consideration because of the certification and the technical nature and the scope of services is quality. And so the technical ranking occurs first where the proposals are actually ranked as Mr. Amstead mentioned by discipline, specific discipline and technical importance. And then the cost proposals are opened up after the committee agrees to it. But I'll let uh, Tim speak to the certification of the staff with local yeah, well, Reference. I guess in, in a general way, as I mentioned, we have groups A and groups B. Okay, groups A tend to be um, a more complex wastewater treatment process. And so the firms that um, wanted to participate way A, they, they were national firms. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they have a local presence here in the Twin Cities. But um, for some of the very um, expertise that's required for some of the processes, uh, they're probably pulling staff from other parts of the country to assist us in the design. Um, so now Group B um, would not be um, what I consider national. There, there are national firms, but a lot of the work can obviously be done you know, locally by local staff. But in general, I think um, Group A work um, would be more complex, and they would probably bring in more individuals from, from national to try to help us out with some of those. And my understanding is that all of the contracting process is very rule driven and we can't say, oh no, we just don't want those people because they're not from here. As long as they've met all of the rules for the process, we say yes, correct? Madam Chair, committee members, yes, there is a very uh, lengthy and thorough procurement process. Um, and so we're most important with making sure our business unit gets what they need. And with this type of work, there is 
some time frames. I'm not sure with this specific work about um, responsibility and some local site conditions, but this project, in addition to all the projects, there's a very thorough review to make sure that they have the qualified and competent staff by each proposal submitted to perform the work that's been outlined in the scope of services. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? And we would be in want of a motion. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Uh, I would like to ask a question. Is is uh, is the anonymous, anonymous email going to, going to be part of the record? I would suggest that we put that at the end of the business item, so then it would go forward. The rest of the council can see it if they read the business item, and it would be part of the the record. Is it? Does that sound all right? Or I recommend that we do that. Yeah. I, I mean, I want to acknowledge that there were questions raised and be transparent about that. And I think that's probably the best way to do it. Madam Chair, and then the answers will be provided as well. Yeah. Got it. In the Got it. business right. Got it. item, they, in the first page where it says what our discussion was, yep. Yep. it'll be in there. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 It passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to extra people coming down to answer questions for us. Yeah. So that is all of our business that we have today. And we have our stand in for the general manager report. Absolutely. Um, my name is Sam Paskey, assistant general manager in the environmental services division. And I'm Honored to be here, actually, because Lisa Thompson, um, the general manager, who you're used to seeing here, is uh, way at a, um, I'm going to read it here so I don't mess it up, National Association of Clean Water Agencies award ceremony, receiving a peak performance award, or actually nine of them, um, for the efforts of our staff in the division and our supporting staff as well. Thank you, Jody. And Shanti's in the back. So many people are behind winning the award for um, nearly perfect, if not perfect, wastewater compliance um, on an annual basis. And this year, all of our plants are included in that award. Um, there are two levels, Platinum Award and Gold Award. The Platinum Award, awarded by this national organization, is the most sought after award level. Um, if you're in the Platinum group, you're there. So we're really proud of our staff for being in that group for generations, actually, um, beyond years. Our Hastings plant and our St. Croix Valley plants, as you've heard in the past, have exceeded 30 years of wow. compliance, uh, which is astonishingly difficult, and we recognize them for that. I think there are only a handful of plants in the country um, that achieve that level or have achieved that level. Um, additionally, our Blue Lake plant, Eagles Point plant, Empire, Metro, 10 years and up. Um, Seneca is at five years, so those are the group that are in the Platinum Award. And then our Rogers plant and East Bethel plants are in the gold level, which is one to four years of consecutive compliance. So it's quite an achievement, mm -hmm. and we're really proud of our staff um, and all, all the effort that goes into maintaining that. Um, every year we track 24,638 individual compliance items. Wow. Um, and we do that um, wow. with just exceptional excellence um, to maintain that level and meet the award criteria. Um, so we're, we're really proud of it, an opportunity to rec recognize staff and thank you for your support um, and in achieving what the public deserves, which is good water quality and good service from the Met Council. I'll pause there in case you have any questions. But that's a pretty amazing accomplishment. I mean, to have all of our plants doing that. And Hastings is the third longest in the country? It, or did it, somebody else drop it, off? We'll yet? have to hear what, <laughs> what the current stats are, but it's up there. Yeah. Wow. We we keep watching one and two to see if Hastings can, know, can move know. up in the in the rankings, but it's a pretty Absolutely pretty amazing accomplishment and it's not just uh getting every 
single testing thing right, if you miss one for you know something goes wrong and you miss just one test, just one, you're you're out. You're out. Yeah. So it's pretty yeah, amazing. It, yeah, it's not just what we test; it's how we test it. Um, it has to be by the book every single time, even through pandemics and <laughs> problems at the plants. I mean, things things are never predictable. <laughs> even with fatbergs going in and. We, we learn about fat birds, yeah, all sorts of challenges. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a phenomenal effort, and it's an all-hands-on-deck uh, effort, too. And the staff really, really right. love what they do and are committed. Any other questions, comments about that one? Then we'll move on to your next announcement. Um, thank you for that, Madam Chair. The other one is I am not sure how much you hear about this um, either internally here or in the media, like the newspapers, but Environmental Services and the Met Council is involved in a, a, an extensive partnership with what we call um, COVID-19 research or wastewater mm -hmm. surveillance. Mm -hmm. um, we are testing wastewater to identify uh, the viral load of COVID-19 and the various um, uh, changes that it undergoes over time uh, with some partners. But I just wanted to mention it again uh, because we recently got some recognition from the Minnesota Department of Health on how valuable our role is in this effort. And that, that's significant because it's, it's a bit of a new nuance. Um, not, not, it's not brand new but for the Met Council's role and for many wastewater utilities nationally, um, this role in public health is an emerging topic. And so we're exploring it with partners that include the University of Minnesota Genomic Center, um, the Medical College with Mayo Clinic, and with other wastewater partners around the state um, to try to see how we can use this tool to better advance public health goals um, not just in the metro area, but statewide. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that we have some of the best information that's the most reliable. Um, and even over time, uh, as testing by people can go up and down, um, they tend to use the wastewater system pretty consistently. <laughs> um, and we find that that information is of high value to the policymakers at the state level. Um, so I just wanted to update you that that partnership is, is really strong. It's being seen as highly valued more and more. Um, it is, and also as a reminder, as we talk about it, my, honestly, my neighbors are fascinated. And for the first time in my life, somebody I was talking to like across the fence said, and where do you work again? Because they're hearing this. And they're like, I have no idea what, what this means, virus and wastewater. The Met Council and oh, the Met Council wastewater, mm -hmm. and I got a response of like, oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I've never gotten the, that kind of response before <laughs> for that function that is now uh, seen as uh, a more visible public asset that we always have known it is. Um, it it is on the cutting edge, if you will, of science. There isn't a lot of research out there on how to identify these changing variants over time. And so we're helping advance how that's done and not just the use of the data itself. So it's an exciting field to watch and our staff who are involved in it are just so impressive in how committed they are to helping advance this science and apply their, their knowledge and years and years of experience with research and development. So it's, it's very exciting and I'm sure we'll, we'll see some new things every week coming out of this function and our partnership with the state. There's been a lot of interest. Our website has been getting tons of hits looking at the, at the data. People didn't know what we do, but now they're paying attention, apparently. Go ahead. Madam Chair, um, Sam, I, this afternoon I was listening to um, a couple of different folks talking about both the current pandemic and then the, the rising numbers in monkeypox. And it, during the course of the conversation, there was a question as to whether or not, as a nation, we're prepared for the next pandemic. And it's like, you know, I know there's a whole field of people whose expertise is this, and they're working on it. But having been through this current pandemic, the thought of another one just kind of makes me nauseous. But to what extent do, do our do Steve and our wastewater folks? Have they in the past been engaged in this pandemic kind of work? And 
as it relates to monkeypox, is there already talk about the possibility of, of waste treatment um, being a tool with, with that, that health risk as well? That's an excellent question, Madam Chair and committee members. Um, there is discussion about using this uh, partnership to look at other mm -hmm. virus uh, risks to the, to the nation, the state, and the region. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if they add to the list some yeah. things that are of concern. Um, and they have the capability, the tools and the methods yeah. um, are there for that now. Um, so yeah, I, I, think, I think we could expect more from a, and it. And, you know, that, like I said, it's kind of an emerging policy area. What is the role of this tool in public health? And, and there's a lot of opportunity there. And I, I know in the state we have really smart people. We have tremendously sophisticated technical um, things at our disposal, like the supercomputer center at the University of yeah. Minnesota, which could find things that we wouldn't even know to look for. Yeah. Um, and so that I think there's a lot of opportunity in that area that that's at our disposal. Well, there was a lot of work done to kind of figure out how the level in wastewater compares to the level in the general population. Mm -hmm. Anything else that we were gonna do would have to follow that same sort